welcome you back to Rocha Ballpark as we're ready to get started with the top half of the fifth inning. Still no score between the Red Raiders and the Jayhawks. I'm Kyle Mathis. I'm joined by Brock Niemeyer here in the broadcast booth. It's good to be back with you today. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon in Lawrence today at Roach Ballpark. But it has been just a pitching duel between Sage Hoover of the Texas Tech Red Raiders and Lizzie Ludwig of the Kansas Jayhawks. Lizzie Ludwig, four strikeouts. Hoover with three for the Red Raiders. Leading off the top of the fifth for the Red Raiders is going to be Kennedy Kreitz, who already has a single in this game, but Gabby Rawls came in to pinch run for her and was victim of a double play back in the third. First pitch by Ludwig is down low for ball one, so one to know. Love to see how Ludwig has stepped up to the plate today, only getting her second start of the season. Four scoreless innings, a really strong outing from her so far. Yeah, she's done really good so far. As this one is just a little bit outside towards the left batter's box. As in the right batter's box right now is Kreitz. But it's 2-0 and for Ludwig. It's been a common theme of us saying Lizzie Ludwig hasn't been down in a count before. It's 2-0. and This one's down in the dirt. Now it's a 3-0 and count. We'll see if Kennedy Kreitz decides with this three ball, no sh- no strike, no out count, if she decides to just take the next pitch or if she'll try to swing on this one. I almost guarantee you she's going to take it in a scoreless ball game where offense is hard to come by. They're going to try and get a base from her any way they can. She does take the next pitch. Didn't even look like she was attempting to swing at all. As that's a strike by Ludwig on the inside portion of the strike zone. And it's 3-1 and one now. Now this could be the, the count right here. And she will decide to try to swing at something if something presents itself. Kreitz only has two walks on the season. Hasn't walked many times, and she gets this one. Anderson grounds it at third easily and flips it over to Bruno at first. So Ludwig, after being down 3-0 and in the count, fights back and gets the first out of the inning on an infield out. The strong arm to retire Kreitz at first base. Shows the trust that Ludwig has in her infield defensively as this first pitch is in the turf for ball one from Ludwig to Abby Ulrich, who is 0 for 1 on the day. Flew out on a pretty deep fly ball out to left field caught by Limbaugh on the track the last time she was up. It's a good catch by Limbaugh too. So 1-0. and Here's the pitch. This is a beautiful, beautiful pitch right at the knees of Ulrich for strike one. It's worth mentioning that KU today, we haven't actually mentioned it yet, but KU is in their all-blue uniforms with Texas Tech in their all-white. So compared to yesterday where Red Raiders were in their all-black and KU is in their light blue. Here's the pitch. That's a really nice pitch. Might have been a little bit of Lyric Moore as well there as it's one and two. Lyric Moore is really good at getting those pitches after caught up in the strike zone, making it look like that's a strike. Yeah, good frame job there by Moore. Yeah. A pr- terrific off-speed pitch from Ludwig. So one ball, two strikes. Mackenzie Herzog at the top of the order for the Red Raiders is on deck. Here's the one-two. That is a beautiful pitch. Almost the same placement by Ludwig for a strikeout. And that is going to be strikeout number five on the day for Lizzie Ludwig, who has only... It's only her second start of the season, and she is playing like she started all season on the, in the circle. Yeah, fantastic pitch sequencing that time. Go with the off-speed pitch on the outer half of the plate and then blow the hard stuff by her with two strikes in the exact same spot. Good good pitch sequencing and good pitch calling that time. First pitch is called strike on the inside portion of the strike zone to McKenzie Herzog, who is right now 0 for 2 on the day. Flew out on a line to Haley Kripe, which resulted in a double play back in the third. I believe we have a pinch hitter, actually. I think actually. it's Demi Elder in the box. The number two, oh, Demi yep. Elder. There we go. So did not spot that, but Demi Elder is actually coming up to hit for Mackenzie Herzog to lead off the order. Appreciate you uh, calling that one out, partner. But Demi Elder batted yesterday as well for the Red Raiders and went 0 for 3. And then this one swung on and missed on the one and one. So now it's one and two from Ludwig. 
Now, if she gets a strikeout here, it would be her sixth of the game. If she gets a strikeout, this crowd could go in a frenzy, especially the KU dugout, as you can hear. So one ball, two strikes to Demi Elder. Trying to get her first hit, the first on-base appearance of the series. And this one is inside, almost in Elder's batting box. It's two and two. Yeah, I don't mind that pitch right there, though, Kyle. With two strikes, Elder gets a little bit closer to the plate. Ludwig backs her off a little bit. We'll see if she goes inside or possibly tries to freeze her on an out outside pitch of the zone here. Keely Wyckoff is on deck. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Oh, that's inside. That might have hit her, and it did. So Lizzie Ludwig hits Elder on a 2-2 two -two pitch. So the first base runner of the game, or rather of the top of the fifth, rather, Coming in here for the Red Raiders, it's Demi Elder. And for Elder, that's actually her second time she's been hit by a pitch this season. And now we see Kaylee Wyckoff come up to bat for the Red Raiders in the second spot. She gets all of this one. Anderson's got it, flips it over to first, and that is going to be the third out. So really quick uh, fourth at bat of the inning. Good fielding by Anderson. That's been a common theme today. And that will be four up, but three down after a hit by pitch by Lizzie Ludwig. So we'll go to the bottom of the fifth, still scoreless between the Red Raiders and the Jayhawks. We'll be back after this on the Jayhawk Sports Network. back to the bottom half of the fifth inning. It has been a scoreless affair, a pitching battle between Sage Hoover and Lizzie Ludwig, who have really just taken these two offenses by storm right now. These two offenses haven't really been able to get anything done as Lyric Moore swings and misses on the first pitch up high. Sage Hoover remains in the circle for the Red Raiders. And Lyric Moore comes up to bat for the Jayhawks in the fourth spot in the batting order. So far today, Lyric Moore is, as she fouls this one off, she is 0 for 1. Just missed that pitch. That was a good hack that time, aggressive hack from Lyric Moore. Somebody who we've seen this season leaves the Jayhawks in batting 297 average. Also up there at home runs on the team 5, tied for the team lead in RBIs with 23. Yeah, she can get on base really well. She would like to get on base right here. Here's the 0-2. That's down and away for ball one. The one and two for Sage Hoover, who has just been pitching lights out right now for the Red Raiders. Like we said before, it's been a pitching duel, to say the least. So no score. Four hits for the Red Raiders. One for the Jayhawks looking for hit number two here. And Moore hits this one down the right field line, and it bounces foul. So that remains one and two. Two errors for the Jayhawks as well. One coming from Olivia Bruno. The second one was from Ashlyn Anderson, which was a little bit of a controversial error call for me and you. We didn't really see that it was an error, but statistically it is. One ball, two strikes from Sage Hoover, delivering to Lyric Moore. That one is up high around the actually kind of the face area of Lyric Moore. She backed up. So two balls, two strikes to Lyric Moore. Sage Hoover looking for her fourth strikeout of the game here. Eric Moore looking for the second hit for the Jayhawks. Here's the pitch. She gets a hold of this one into left center, and that one might be gone. No, it hits the warning track, hits the wall, and Lyric Moore gets the second standing. So a leadoff double for Lyric Moore. 
The Red Raiders team that is predominantly a doubling team leads the nation in doubles. Kansas says, here's a taste of your own medicine right back at you. And the Jayhawks finally have some life here in the bottom of the fifth. A leadoff base runner aboard and in scoring position with a good part of their lineup coming up. Hopefully they can break this scoreless tie. Great swing that time from Lyric Moore. Yeah, she got a pitch almost exactly where she wanted it. In the infield, or the outfield rather, which we see shift sometimes to left field, wasn't shifted there. Really nicely done. Finally, though, KU gets a base hit into the outfield. This is one's up high to Ashton Anderson. Like Brock said, really good part of the order coming up here, the middle of the order for KU. They just, they have really good batters with batting average, and they can get on base. We'll see what happens here. One ball, no strikes. Anderson hits this one to shortstop. Oric over to first. It's high. And Anderson takes off for second. Taking off for third is Moore. That is going to be an error for Abby Oric, who threw it over Ellie Bailey at first. It was always going to be a tough play. Oric had to freeze Moore, who was maybe going to advance the third on the ground ball. Rush the throw to first. Now the Jayhawks have two runners in scoring position with nobody out. The best chance they've had any team has had to score a run in this ball game. And here comes Ainsley Linduff coming up to bat for the Jayhawks with two runners in scoring position. Lyric Moore at third, Ashlyn Anderson at second because of the error by Abby Oric over at short. But like you said, that was really good. Honestly, just good a good job by Lyric Moore distracting Oric. Forcing her to make that throw a little too high. Doing exactly what you're supposed to do when you're on second base and you're not getting forced to go to third. Try and just, you have to make the, uh, you have to freeze, obviously, because the runner, you don't want to run into a tag. But she looked at it a little too long and then rushed the throw to first base. And the Jayhawks are in business here in the fifth. And Craig Schneider is taking a circle visit here, visiting Sage Hoover, maybe. I don't think he will take her out of the game. She'll definitely stay in as he walks back to the Texas Tech dugout, but definitely giving her a game plan here of how to limit the damage with no outs here. Two base runners for the Jayhawks, but only two hits in the game for Kansas and no score at a Rocha ballpark. But Ashlyn Anderson gets on base. It looks like a tough play by Oric, and it ended up being that. Here's Ainsley Linduff up to bat for the Jayhawks. First pitch from Hoover. Swing and a miss by Linduff. Ainsley Linduff this season with 14 RBIs, and now she has two in scoring position here. Looking to bring the first run of the game overall home. Infield pretty much all in for the Red Raiders. Yeah, expecting a potential bunt. Linda pops this one up into foul territory on the run for it and not able to make the grab is Riley Love at third. It hits the net in left foul territory. So that was actually, could have ended, actually ended up pretty badly for KU if that catch was made. That'd be worst case scenario. Yeah, it seems like Linda's goal at worst case scenario for her right now is to get this one out to the outfield and let Lyric Moore tag and come home. 0-2, hit, weakly to short, Abby Oric over to first. It's not in time, Linduff makes it there as it hit the ground. So what a play by Linduff to beat the throw. Once again, Lyric Moore, looks like she might have been coming home, froze Oric on the throw. And now the base is loaded for the Jayhawks with no outs. And coming up to bat, is Haley Kripe, who has a few home runs this year for the Jayhawks. Doesn't get to start too much, but she has three home runs already this season. 12 RBIs for Kripe. See what the Jayhawks can do. No outs. Base is loaded. Here's the pitch. And Kripe fouls this one off behind the press box and towards the soccer field for the first strike. You can see she's telling herself to get the ball down. She chased that one up above the letters. Obviously excited. Bases loaded. Nobody out with a chance to really break this game open. But she's got to calm herself down and get a good pitch she can hit. On deck is Katie G. Here's the next pitch. This one is hammered. Foul into left field towards the media parking lot. Yeah, she got made good contact yeah, she on did. that. But it was well inside. Again, I don't think that one would have found the zone either. 
So she's down 0-2 in the count and has possibly swung at two pitches out of the zone. Maybe the big moment right now in this game, getting her to swing at pitches she wouldn't normally swing at. No balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. And it's fouled off and gets stuck in the netting. Wonder how they're going to get that one down after the game. So no balls, two strikes again. So it goes Haley Kripe, then Katie G. And if it happens, Haley Harper is the third batter after Katie G. Remaining in the order at the bottom of the order. Base is loaded. Here's the 0-2. Kripe swings and misses at a pitch up high, and that's the first out of the bottom of the fifth. And it comes at a big time as well. Great pitch now, that time from Sage Hoover. You know, Kyle, she noticed that Kripe was being aggressive and chasing pitches out of the zone. And with an 0-2 count, threw one up above the letters again to get the strikeout. And now she's just a ground ball away from getting out of a bases loaded, nobody out jam. Katie G, in just her first start of the season, comes up to bat with one out and the bases loaded. And G takes this one a little farther inside than... Hoover would have anticipated for ball one. So 1-0. One Good eye by G. What can she do right now for the Jayhawks? Such a big situation for her at the moment. Just her fourth at bat of the season. 1-0. And G gets a hold of this one, but it's going to be foul. Oh, really got good contact into left field. But just a little early. So 1-1 one one is the count. Haley Harper is on deck. So Katie G had a couple big moments in high school at Carroll High School in Texas. See if she can have a big moment here in Lawrence. G gets a hold of this one again and hits it into left field way foul. One ball, two strikes, and Brock, if Hoover can get another strike out here, that would be an enormous out. Well, one thing we talked to Coach Falls before the game about was getting the right pitches and swinging at the right pitches to hit, and so far these last two Jayhawk batters have been chasing pitches out of the zone, so Hoover's just going to keep throwing them. KU's game plan yesterday was be aggressive, hit the first pitch. Today it's be smart. As G swings and misses for the second out, and now... Sage Hoover is almost exactly where she want to be. Two outs, despite the bases being loaded, Haley Harper comes up to bat as we get a pinch runner for the Jayhawks. Peyton Renzi will come in and pinch run for Ainsley Linduff over at first. But if you're just joining us, the bases are loaded for the Jayhawks. They were loaded with zero outs. Now Sage Hoover has gotten back-to-back strikeouts, and now the bases are loaded with two outs. And it's because the Jayhawks, like I said, are chasing pitches out of the zone. That two-strike pitch was up above the letters again. A good rise ball from Hoover, but you have to lay off of those. Haley Harper this season, just eight RBIs. Here's the pitch. Harper takes that one high. Good eye right there, and you nodded your head over to my right. That was a good take. Yeah, exactly right. That's the pitch that Kripe and G have swung at the last two times and struck out swinging. Harper, good job of paying attention to the pitcher's plan from the on-deck circle. Harper takes another one high for ball two. So you can see Sage Hoover trying to get her to swing at a high pitch. So 2-0 and now to Haley Harper. Base is loaded, bottom of the fifth. No score in Orocha Ballpark between the Red Raiders and the Jayhawks in game two of this three-game series. Here's the 2-0. And there you go. That's a good pitch for Hoover. That one curves inside for strike one. I don't e- I don't hate that take that time from Harper. I know Hoover's had back-to-back strikeouts, but she hasn't got them from throwing pitches in the zone. Harper's trying to make Hoover prove she can beat her by throwing pitches inside the strike zone. Two and one. This pitch is at the knees of Harper, just a little bit in the strike zone at the bottom of it, and it's two and two now, two outs. Just a huge moment in this game. If Texas Tech can get out of this one, they can attack in the top of the sixth. We'll have to see if Lizzie Ludwig will come back out for the Jayhawks to pitch. Here's the 2-2 to Harper. And Harper, I think she, oh, it looked like maybe she got hit, but it actually hit the upper portion of her bat, and it will be foul. But it really looked like there was a chance there that she got hit. 
And it's two and two with two outs. Just a huge situation for the Kansas Jayhawks. Only had one run yesterday in the loss. Trying to get one here. Here's the 2-2. Harper hits this one weakly and grabbing it at short is Abby Oric. And that will be Sage Hoover's best moment of the game right here. After loading the bases with no outs, she gets three straight and limits the Jayhawks to no runs. So we'll go to the top of the sixth. Remaining scoreless between Kansas and Texas Tech will be back right after this on the Jayhawks Sports Network. 